Hello, good evening and good day wherever you are in the world. It's uh, Michael De Groot. It is Monday. It is 8 p.m. in the UK and it's LinkedIn Lectures Live. So thank you all for making it and taking some time out in your day, in your spare time to come and listen to my lectures. And for those of you who are watching, listening on replay, welcome to you too. Um, sorry you couldn't make it live, but it's good that you're watching it on replay. So let's dive in because it is eight o'clock and if uh, anybody hasn't joined yet, hopefully they'll join really very soon. <clears throat> so I'm your host, Michael De Groot, and if you want to know anything about me and connect with me on all the different channels that are available, just search for me in Google and put in at Staying Alive UK and you will learn everything there is to know about me with a bit of luck. Alternatively, of course, you can go to stayingaliveuk.com and learn a little bit more too. And just in terms of learning, uh, just to share with you all that I've been on LinkedIn for a very long time. So I can call myself a bit of an expert, although I don't really like the term because anybody that uses any piece of online software can call themselves an expert these days. And unfortunately, I don't like to be compared with all of the experts that are out there, some are good and some are, let's put it this way, could learn a little bit more. So I've been in the sales and marketing arena for over 30 years and I'm particularly focusing on storytelling now uh, and have been for the last five years or so. And by the way, as we're going to be talking about LinkedIn lectures today, Today, we're actually going to not talk about LinkedIn as much as we normally do, because I know that some of you out there are finding it quite difficult to find time to do all of the things that you need to be doing, whether you're a small business or a large business. It is always a challenge to be going to meetings, going to see clients, making phone calls, sending emails, responding to emails and do social media. So. I want to show you some of my tips, some secrets that I use, things that I use. They're not a secret, to be honest, but they are just the way that I use it to save time for myself. Right now on the screen, you can see a URL and hopefully you've already taken note of it or taken a screenshot. I'm not going to go to this particular site now. I'm just going to share the, the offer and you can have a look and see what's there. What I am going to focus on is that some of you who are new or maybe have been with me for a number of weeks have definitely not seen all of the webinars. I'm sure that people do not have time to come every single week and attend. So therefore, I have been recording all of it and I've been creating a handy e-course that allows you to go back in time and learn everything there is to know. I've got now 40 lectures. There'll be another two going up tomorrow from this content. So there will be 42 lectures there, over seven hours worth of content. You get lifetime access. And let's just jump to the store so you can see what it looks like. So when you follow the URL that I've shown, which is the eCourse, URL, so stayingaliveuk.com forward slash slash store forward slash e-course, e hyphen course, it will bring you to this page and you can see that I'm selling this for 10 UK pounds to catch up with all my previous webinars and you will be given a link with a password because the, the course is private, it's not public at the moment and you will need to do a few things and it's important to scroll down on this e-course website and have a look at these images that are scrolling through here one by one and you can see what happens now 
you are able to download the app and get to it that way but I suggest you go in this way you can see step one step two you've got to sign up an account before you're able and you've got to click this buy now button before you're able to get access but if you're using my account and the link rather I should say if you're using the link that you get when you purchase this then it will be 100% free so when you go and purchase it on the site don't think you're going to be charged again but if you have got any issues just come back to me I highly recommend this I will continue to update the content on there so it, it's a very very good course even if I save myself and just to give you a quick run through so here's the overview you can see 40 lectures seven hours worth of content and if we look at the course content just briefly you can see that they're all divided in sections which essentially are all the webinars that I've run and then within those sections you can expand it and there is three or four videos in there and they're somewhere between five minutes to 20 minutes long and none of them are longer than 20 minutes I believe and that means they're all bite-sized kind of videos there's one for 16 minutes because setting some privacy is a massive subject and you can just work your way through or jump around which one you're more interested in and you can see they're also not just LinkedIn things there you can see last time I talked about the engagement plan email template CRM and engagement tracking an area that is massively overlooked so check that out see what you think and let me know and first what we're going to talk about what I'd like to do is give you some updates on what changes have happened in LinkedIn and then also some faults that I've identified and I've reported so firstly there's a small update on pending invitations this is the pending invitation section let me just show you how you get to that because not everybody knows that you go to my network in fact I'm already let me just go to home <laughs> you click on my network and then you'll see all your received invitations at the top and at the bottom you see people you may know so you just click show more and then all of the people that are waiting to be accepted are listed here so there's eight of them there and the very small change that I noticed in the last week or so is this one here where Shamina is connected to 41 people that I know mutual connections so that's a hell of a lot and you can see they will be all listed here and you can check who is it that she also knows and you can say well therefore I've not met her before but I trust her and I can click accept naughty that she hasn't personalized her invitation you can see some people personalized the invitation here um, which here's a logo which I'm not interested in connect, connecting with at all but very few people this lady here um, yeah that's okay although I can't see her picture so I need to investigate that a bit further but the change that I've seen is this little thing where you can immediately see who you've got in common that means you don't have to go to their profile to be able to see that it's just a quick handy shortcut essentially and then the second area um, that I've discovered is this fault in recommendations this may not be that interesting to everybody however I'll just demonstrate it to you anyway so that you are aware of it whether it will ever get fixed whether they agree with me that it's a fault I don't know first to explain you can see here I've got my experience section I'll just minimize so you can see it chief storyteller staying alive UK limited volunteer co-founder there in the old version of LinkedIn you were able to see any recommendations with the experience section that is no longer the case and the experience section sorry recommendation section is an area completely on its own which is here and you can see that it tells you the date and then the whole recommendations given 
and if you want to see more you have to keep clicking on it to see more and I'm going to do this relatively quickly to show you that I received a recommendation for a previous role which was with Social Sales GPS and because it no longer sits inside the experience section that recommendation it has placed that recommendation right at the end of all of the recommendations I've still got to keep going it still isn't there there's 11 times I've got to click through. There's no way anybody, not even my connections and people that know me really well, that are interested in clicking down this far. You can see here, May the 2nd is when I, today's May the 8th, May the 2nd, I was given this recommendation. And it's right at the bottom because it was for a different role. And here are the recommendations for different roles. And it's just very, very strange that it should have happened this way. I don't agree it's correct. So let's see what they come back with. So that covers that. Let's move on. So the topics today are going to be scheduling content with an app called Buffer and curating content with, a, with an app um, an aggregator called Feedly and both of these products are helping me to be super efficient in sharing any kind of content with my audience and also it keeps me abreast of what's going on in my interested say sector my industry as well and then if we have time um, Please feel free to ask questions. In fact, please feel free to ask questions live uh, inside the chat and I will answer them. Certainly, if not by the end, um, I will make sure that I email you or give you the answer in one way or the other. So that's what we're going to cover. And we're going to have a look now at content scheduling with Buffer. And I'd, I'd like to also give you a little bit of an explanation about Buffer. And Buffer um, are an amazing team of people that are very committed to working in a new and modern way as a company. And they only started with a few people and now they are employing all of these guys all over the world. They're not in one central location. They have got a distributed team uh, that are remote working and you can learn all about Buffer through their website basically. So you just go to buffer.com and learn about the company. Now their culture is also very unique and their customer service is second to none. And this is their pricing page. And I want to just show you what it means, because let's say you're an individual. That's what we're going to focus on today, that you get um, a free account. That's what we want to focus on. And you can have one social account per platform. So, for, for instance, Facebook, you can only have one Facebook page. So it's either going to be a page or your personal Facebook, one or the other, or a Facebook group, because you can connect to groups as well. If you go for the paid version, the awesome plan, which is what I've got, you can have your Facebook personal, your Facebook page, several Facebook groups, up to a total of 12 different accounts. And you can't have any other team members, so it's just you yourself. And as a, in a free account, you can schedule per account 10 posts in advance that's pretty handy as long as you're putting you know let's say if you're putting two posts out per day that's five days in advance you so a whole week you can schedule in advance and you never need to go back to look at putting stuff out there this is going to go out automatically obviously you can put and post stuff out there 
kind of casually as you come up over it but at least you know that there are two posts going out to your channels whenever you need it so you could have one Facebook one Twitter one LinkedIn one Google plus um, so you could have those five um, but basically it says one per platforms here so probably five or six oh there's Pinterest and Instagram here as well so you can see Twitter Facebook LinkedIn Google plus okay Pinterest isn't on that one it's only Instagram as well and you get this browser extension which we're going to cover you get the apps you get an image creator video and gif uploader and you don't get some of these other things you don't get the analytics optimal timing tool which we're going to cover as well and it's free forever and I highly recommend this is what I do did start with the free package to begin with and then move on to the pay package if you think you're enjoying it and you want to do more with it so let's go to my buffer which is here and as you will see if I just give you a quick navigation around the site here you can see I've got a LinkedIn page I've got a Twitter page Google Plus my personal Facebook my Pinterest my Instagram my staying alive LinkedIn page my staying alive Facebook page a Facebook group another Facebook group and a staying alive Google Plus page as well so I've got all of these and you can see these ticks here are grayed out and the blue ones here have been ticked it's because those are my defaults meaning that whenever I want to post anything at any time then I'm going to be able to do that automatically to those three by default wherever I am so wherever I might be navigating and the the principle why it's called buffer is that whatever post you're putting out there you're literally sending them to your buffer and in my case you can see tomorrow I've got this post going out at that time then I've got another one going out at quarter past 12 and another one at nearly five o'clock or BST time now I know that this one I added in addition to these other two uh, because they were already scheduled in advance at another time and then that one I added on top of it so let's look at the schedule because that's the important thing so this is my schedule for LinkedIn and it's telling me to post every single day Sunday to Saturday at these two times and I can add a posting time if I wish at any stage or I can remove it and that will I can have four I can have five it doesn't really matter if you've got that much content to post but once you've posted it you can just forget about it it goes out at that time and once you've had some experience on here then buffer is going to help you by suggesting to you which days and times are the best so for instance you've got this optimal timing tool but you've needed to have been active certainly for several weeks it because it takes some analysis of what you've already been doing and if I click I'm just going to open that in a new tab if I go to the optimal scheduling tool I can say I only want to post twice a day from my LinkedIn account and I can run this on all of my different accounts that I've got in here and I'll say calculate the times it is telling me that my ideal optimal times are those two times and I can just replace the existing schedule and then everything that might be in my queue automatically gets changed so you can see where all my activity is here those are the times where where things are most active for me it's just that's just how it works and you can see that it's not very active early in the morning although I would say you know very early it's not but mid-morning for some reason it is now that could have something to do with the fact that people are waking up in the United States at that time and I get more activity there and certainly around that time when maybe people are deciding to leave work or they're commuting 
who knows but this is quite a handy little way of deciding so your first job you've got to do is decide what your optimal times are and I suggest you begin with one post in the morning and one post in the evening or you could do one post at lunchtime and one post at evening or you could do three posts which will be one in the morning one at lunchtime and one in the evening so in America they call that coffee and couch so it could be one in the morning or one in the evening I added lunchtime and I used to do three posts a day but I've just reduced it a little bit um, just because I don't want to be putting that much content out there because I tend to do more engagement activities but I still do put content out there as well so your first job is go to the schedule for every single account that you have this one again is slightly different again I've done it based on the optimal timing tool and that's automatically changed it to those times so I leave it for that and maybe once a month I review it to see where I'm getting the activity and at what time by the way buffer will guide you through how to get everything set up but at the end of my list is this connect more once you get in that is all you're going to be able to see so you click connect and then you go through the process of adding the different accounts and we've already seen that you can only have these five accounts here so that is Google Facebook LinkedIn Twitter and and Instagram and then that will allow you to, to connect to these so you won't be able to get hold of Pinterest unless you have a higher paid account so once you've connected it then the, the next job is doing the schedule that's what you need to do and there's a few other little things but for now that's the simplest thing to do and there's nothing else you need to worry about just connect your account set up the schedule and then get into action and to start with also you can and this is the same by the way on any of the apps because they also have fantastic apps which look very very similar you can post stuff directly from here as well so you can literally decide if you just want to do a one-off post um, let me just type something just demonstrating the power of and I can mention somebody um, actually let's do it on Twitter because then actually I did I didn't need to move at all I could have just stayed here and added Twitter just demonstrating the power of add buffer so it automatically finds buffer for me um, to my linked let's put a hashtag on that linked in lectures students um, by posting in their desktop app and I can then decide you can see those two are colored which means that's where they will go but I could put it also to my Google Plus I can put it onto my company page on LinkedIn my Facebook page uh, there's a couple of groups here there's my Google Plus uh, page and there's my personal page there but I don't want to put it to my personal page so you can decide where you want to send it and you only need to write it once this is the beauty so I can literally go I can add, add it to the queue which means it goes to the bottom of the list I can share it next whatever next time slot is available I can share it now I can schedule the post as well in the future at any time at any date in the future I can even schedule it for Christmas time if I want to but for now I'm just going to send it out straight away so this goes out to all of these different channels and that's where it gets posted just by one click and I don't need to repeat it I could have added a photo or a video in exactly the same way but the power of it is to schedule things right so what we need 
apart from content, we need to be able to take our own content and share it, right? So let's demonstrate this now. And you'll see here on my Google Chrome, you'll see at the top here, this little icon, which is the buffer share button. And I'm here on my blog, on my latest blog post, which I published on May the 1st. And what I can do, once I've downloaded this extension in my browser, and you can put it on Chrome, on Safari, wherever you want to, I can just click that. It finds the blog posts. And in fact, let me just show you something else really, really cool. Um, I can highlight a bit of text, right? And instead of the title of the blog post, it should pick up this text. And that makes it um, a little bit more. So, I, so here you can see we have Simon Sinek to thanks for making this word famous because it's picked up the text. Then this is my Twitter. So it shows Twitter, LinkedIn and Google, because if you remember, these were the defaults here. So it's picking those up as the defaults. But again, I can decide to put it in different places as well. And the only thing it doesn't do with Facebook, you've got to have a message in there. So very simple. I can literally just copy, copy the Twitter one. I go to Facebook and I can just, um, no, let me just do that again. Copy in there. There we go. So now it's there for Facebook as well. And I don't need to share anywhere else to Facebook, but you can see it's going to two LinkedIn. It's going to my, my personal profile and my company page. And the same with, with Google Plus. What I do want is to make sure that the image is posted as well. So I'm going to select that image for Twitter. Let's just make sure it's there for Facebook and it's there for LinkedIn as well. And now I've, I'm happy with that and I can just add it to the queue in the same way. Share next now, schedule post or add it to the queue. I just want to add it to the queue. It now says adding to queue and it's gone. There you go, <laughs> it's gone. So now if I go back to buffer and I'll just refresh that and I purposely haven't got that much in my queue so we can have a look at this where it appears. There you go. So the next slot is Wednesday the 10th of May. We have Simon Sinek to thank for making this word famous and it will show on LinkedIn. It will be there on Twitter on another different day at a different time but it's there again as well. Google Plus, that one's longer, so I won't bother with that. It's not in there. I know I didn't send it. I sent it to my company page. There we go. There it is as well. So, in fact, that one's going out today because that's the next available slot, right? And I don't need to worry about it. And I can do this for up to 10 posts in the future. And in fact, if you have the paid version, you can go up to 200 posts in the future. So you can just keep adding and adding and adding more stuff to the queue and you then don't need to worry about it. But the idea is to personalize things a little bit rather than just leave it, you know, whatever is there. And picking up a line inside a blog post is usually a good way of doing it. Now, I wanted to show you just very briefly one other little thing, um, I'm not going to maybe let's see, I don't know if this has got enough words or not. I'm going to go to the share button again. And there's another button top left here, which is called a power scheduler. So if I wanted to take that blog post and I wanted to share it for a long time in the future, I can add many, many more dates in the future and make sure that I'm regularly posting something. And then you just need to add to these buttons here and make sure that you then share that. So you then look at what's there. You can change the text if you want to and click save. And then if you want it to appear for the next three days or maybe next four days, then the same thing happens. 
you might want to change the text there. And buffer, by the way, have got their own shortener, so don't worry about having to get that from anywhere else. So buff.ly already shortens the link as well. So I think I have shared enough. You can probably see the power of this. Go and check out Buffer. Go and get the free account. They are super helpful when it comes to working with you and helping you to understand it. They give away loads of information, loads of social media training. They're a super company to work with and I'm a massive fan. So good luck with Buffer and if you've got any questions on that, please reach out to me. Now we're going to look at Feedly. So think about using Buffer in conjunction with Feedly. That's the idea. So let's go to Feedly and this is my Feedly. Let me just increase it, the screen a little bit. And you can see I've already got quite a bit of content here and I've got two feeds. One is called Curated Story, one is called Creative. And these are websites that I have found, which I have found by going to the search area here. And I've then added them to this Curated Story, which then allows me to go through and decide some articles that I like in there that I then share with my audience. And the only way I do that is I send it through to Buffer. And so let's first of all look at a search and see how we find things on here. So some of the areas that I'm interested in, of course, I'm interested in marketing. So let's see what comes out marketing. So now it's giving me, and I might have, have I got Seth? I've already got Seth Godin's blog there. I've got Mashable, Quick Sprout, social media. HubSpot. HubSpot is supposed to be quite good, but ah, Kissmetrics supposed to be. So let's follow this one. And now it's giving me the choice to say where to add it. So I just add that blog to my curated story list and it should appear. Let's have a look. Where has it gone? Let me just do a quick refresh. I can't see it. Hmm. Oh, there it is. There it is. Sorry. It's because it started with the. And now it gives me some articles that are coming up from their blog that goes back two hours, one day, three days. And I just look and see which one do I like that would my audience enjoy reading. And the four statistical concepts every online marketer should know. In fact, that looks quite interesting, but let's go and check it out. So this is actually, uh, where is it? I think it might be medium, but I'm not sure. I then have a read, but I'm not going to go into detail. And did you notice there's the buffer button here as well? So you can actually share it to buffer from here, but on the desktop where I am at the moment, you got to pay for it. I don't want to do that and I'm going to show you in a second the app where you don't need to pay for it. But what I can do is click on the article it then takes me to the article. I can then click the buffer button in here because I've already got that. So I don't need to. It's obviously easier to stay in the application, but here I'm able to directly go. Now, let's make sure I do what I've said before. To some people, this may sound like a boring topic. To others, it may very be the most. Um, let's have a look. And the last two. Good work is worth noting if you can't communicate it to your clients. No, I don't want that. <laughs> um, there it is. I've still managed to grab that. And. Let's use that image because that's the one that's being used. It's going to my three, add to queue. And now this is being added to my buffer queue and I don't need to worry about it. I don't want this. And I can close that now. 
and I've now dealt with that particular one here. And what I do as a habit, once I've decided all of the different channels that I want to see content on, and you only need to go to this when you're ready to share some content and see what's available. I go through and I to add stuff to my queue, I literally just have a look and see what's come through each week. And I look at something that I find interesting. Um, and you just literally just run through and decide which ones are of interest to you. And if you can't find anything that you like, because there has to be something you can engage with and you feel, you know, some affinity to. Uh, Why well, four out of five articles fire, fail. OK, that's quite. And, you know, they've got nice images, Content Marketing Institute. So, again, I just go and click on this. I look for some text that I might be interested in. We might be rushed. I'm sure I'm all confused about what it is our audience wants. I'm, I'm just grabbing something. You've got all these pop-ups coming up, of course, because they want you to subscribe to them direct rather than just make sure that images are there, which they are, add to queue, and it's gone. So I don't need to worry about that now. I've done that one. And you literally just go through it. Now, let me show you the same thing on the iPad as well so here's the ipad and as you can see in exactly the same way it looks no different i can just go to the channel that i'm interested in and i can decide by the way the way you lay all of these things out can be changed um, uber has a massive relationship problem now, you can see it says buffer at the bottom or you've got the buffer one at the top right. So I'm going to tap on the top right one and it's bringing the buffer app. You must have the app on your on your mobile, so your iPad or your iPhone or your Android. You tap the buffer app and it's getting the link and it's getting the message and it's getting the photograph and it's automatically showing the three channels at the top and I can add more if I want to so I can decide to put it somewhere else as well I'm not going to and then I can that's gone I can then send it to my buffer or I can share it custom schedule share next share now or just add it to your queue and that's all I want to do with this and it's gone. So the great thing you could see, it literally takes a few seconds to do this inside the app. It's a really big time saver and you can just literally just go through to the next one. Uh, Larry Kim on Medium, he's usually got some interesting things to share. Top 10 business plan templates you can download for free. That sounds cool. So why don't I share that? Now, interestingly enough, what it hasn't done, it hasn't added an image, which I'm not happy about because I, images, it's so important to have images go with this as well. So for some re reason on medium, this isn't working very well. It's not picking up the image. So I'm not going to share that. And you also don't have to, you know, you can you can also share some wacky things as well. Here's the tiny Buddha, which I'm interested in. Um, so you can look at content here as well. And let's see if that one picks up the image. Yes, it does. I can add that to my buffer. Very, very simply done. And on here, I can take you to my buffer app as well. Just refresh it. And then you can see some of the content that we just shared earlier. There they are. That's that one we've just shared a few seconds ago. Very, very simple to do. So I highly recommend that you check out Feedly and Buffer 
So you get the two working together and it's super easy to navigate around. It is not complicated. You, the only thing that's complicated is the original setup. You've got to decide which particular categories, and it's very easy because there's lots of categories here, which are the categories that you are interested in wishing to have content coming through so that you are then able to share those with your audience. Indeed, wherever you are visiting a website, it really doesn't matter. I could be on my own website. Um, so let me add that one. In fact, I'm going to schedule that one for some time in the future. And not that late. But I'm going to do it around 4.30, which seems to be a popular time. Now, I can't see the image there, so I just want to make sure the image goes with it. There we go, and I'll click Schedule so that one goes out in the future sometime. But I can literally go to any website at all. I can go to the LinkedIn blog, which obviously I like to go to from time to time. And I can go to this side. You, there's no buffer button on here, but I can just click my buffer button and there you go. I can make sure that that one's got a picture with it. And I can just add it to the queue. Super, super easy to do. Any content, anywhere, you can share it. OK, I think we've probably come to the end of this section now. And I hope you've managed to get something out of it. If you've got any questions now, then by all means, share them with me and I'll be happy to answer any. Alternatively, just reach out to me, michael at stayingaliveuk.com or support at stayingaliveuk.com and um, I'll be very, very happy to get back to you. Also, I have got, and let's just go there. Let's just go to Facebook. And I have got a group on here. Um, oh, we can do live video from a browser. Yay. I've been waiting for that. Fantastic. <laughs> That's great news. Um, please, please. I've got we've got 12 members, people that have joined um, LinkedIn lectures. Please feel free to find LinkedIn Lectures group asked to join. I'm only allowing people that have attended, either watch the replay or let's put it this way, people that have registered. So <laughs> feel free to come and join. There's very little discussion going on at the moment, but I'm hoping that people will become more active and, and engage in some discussions on here where we can continue the discussion after the webinars. Indeed, also, if you're going to take my Udemy course and you then want to ask some more questions on that, this will be a great place to have those back and forth. And it doesn't matter what your questions are, there is no such thing as a stupid question because probably other people are wondering and wish, are wanting to ask the same question but are too shy to do so. So somebody has to start with it at some stage. OK, so this is the end of the webinar today. The next one is going to be Monday, May the 15th, same time, which is 8 p.m. Just to remind everybody, it's 8 p.m. British summer time, 9 p.m. in Europe on the continent, uh, on the east coast of America at 3 p.m., 12 p.m. at Pacific time, and then probably some other times around the world as well. But Hopefully, by those times, you should be able to work it out yourself. Just Google it and you'll be able to convert it to your own time zone. Thank you for joining and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. All the best. Bye for now. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.